Oh, it's just not right, madam, let yourself fall to pieces. Hmm? Everybody is out enjoying the sunshine. Even the cat knows how to be happy. He's out there now trying to catch himself a bird. And here you sit, shut away in this house like some kind of nun. Well, that's no fun, is it? Now listen to what I'm saying. It's been months since you've left the house. I shall never leave this house. Why should I? My life is over. He lies in his grave. And I have buried myself within these four walls. We are both dead. Oh, there you go again. Oh, let me hear the like of it. <laughs> Look, your husband is dead. Thank God rest his soul. He's not going to come back. Your grief is good and proper. Now it's time to move on. You can't wear black grief the rest of your life. I lost my old woman too years ago. I grieved for her. I cried for a whole month. And that was enough. <laughs> Not sit around singing hymns. Which <laughs> wasn't worth it. <laughs> You've got naughty neighbours, you don't go out, you never ask anybody in. We live like like spiders in the dark, if you'll excuse the expression. And the good light of day we never see. And we never, ever go out. It's a shame, madam. Can't we just go out for a bit? And it's all right. It would be fine if there was somebody worth going to see. The neighbourhood is just full of eligible young men. <laughs> There's a regiment stationed to the next town. All oh, those good-looking officers. <laughs> they melt in your mouth. <laughs> and they have, a, they have a dance every Friday afternoon, every Friday evening, and they have a concert every afternoon. Oh, madam, take a look at yourself. You're still a pretty young thing. You're still beautiful. You could just go out and enjoy life and just let your spirit live. Beauty won't last forever, you know. You wait. Until ten short years are over. You wish you'd gone out after those officers. But it will be too late. <laughs> Do not speak of these things again. Mm. You know very well since my husband died, life has passed all meaning. I may look like I'm alive, but I'm not, do you understand? I swore I would wear black and shut myself up here until the day I die. Oh, oh, that is departed soul may see how I love him. Oh, I know it's no secret to you he was often unjust to me, cruel. And he wasn't faithful. I shall be faithful to the grave and prove to him how I can love. There in the beyond, he'll find me the same as I was until his death. No, oh, that's just a lot of talk. What's the sense of all these words? So whether I'd rather go out for a walk in the garden or, or let me harness up Toby and go visit your neighbour. <laughs> oh, what is it, madam? Oh, oh I'm sorry, oh, heaven's sake, what's the matter? Oh, he loved Toby oh, so. Indeed. Oh, he would ride all over the neighbourhood. Yes. Oh, what a wonderful horse he was. How fine he looked <laughs> when he pulled at the reins with all his might. Oh, Toby. Oh, go and tell them in the stables to give Toby extra oats today. Oh, don't worry, madam, I will. <laughs> Who's that? Oh, go and tell whoever it is I'm at home to know what. Yes, madam. <laughs> you shall see what real love is, Nikolai. How I can love and forgive. My love will die only with me when my poor heart stops beating it. Aren't you ashamed? I've been a good, faithful wife. I've imprisoned myself here and I shall remain true until the day I die in you. Oh, I hope you're ashamed of yourself, my dear monster. <laughs> you quarreled with me. You cheated on me, you left me alone for weeks on end, I had no... Weeks? Oh, madam, 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 yes. someone's asking for you, he says he can't wait, he insists on seeing you. And you told him since my husband's death I received no one? I told him, but he wouldn't listen. So 
I said, very important. And I said I received no one. Well, I said that. But he's a wild man. He swore and pushed back me the room. He's in the dining room now. All right, tell him all right. Show him in. Impudent. Oh, really? The nerve of some people. What can they want with me? Why do they just leave me alone? Yes, maybe I should be a nun after all. <laughs> Ooh, there's a convent. I wonder what kind of nun I would make. You fool! You make too much noise! Stop trying to talk me out of here, idiot! Ah, <clears throat> madam. I have the honour to introduce myself. I am Gregory Stefanovich Smirnov, landowner and lieutenant of artillery, retired. I own a place over in the next county. Sorry to disturb you, but this is a matter of importance. What can I do for you? I had the honour of, uh, of knowing your late husband, and as it happened, he owed me two IOUs amounting to some 1,200 rubles. Now, as I have a mortgage payment due tomorrow, I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to pay up, and I need the money today. 1,200? And for what did my husband owe the money for? I sold him some oats. Oh, oh Luca. Don't forget to tell him the stables to give Toby his extra oats. <laughs> <laughs> if my husband owed you the money, then I shall, of course, pay you, but you'll have to excuse me as I haven't got any cash with me here today. My manager will be back from town the day after tomorrow. He'll see you get paid, but today I'm afraid I cannot help you. It's exactly seven months today that my husband died, and, oh, I'm in a sad mood. I'm in no condition to discuss money matters. And I am in a sad mood. I'm ready to fly up the chimney with my feet in the air, because if I don't pay my mortgage tomorrow, they will seize my property and I will lose everything. You'll have your money the day after tomorrow. I cannot wait till the day after tomorrow. I need it today. I have already said I cannot pay you today. And I have already told you I cannot wait until the day after tomorrow. But what can I do if I don't have it? That means you won't pay it. It means I can't pay it. You've made up your mind. I've made up my mind. And that is your final word. That is my final word. Well, thank you very much. I will make a note of that. I'm going to take this line down. On the way over here, I met my accountant. Why are you so down in the dumps, he says. Well, excuse me, but he should know. I am desperate for money. I felt a knife at my throat. I got up yesterday at the crack of dawn, went round to everyone I know who owes me money, and no one has paid me. Ran in more circles than a hunting dock. Spent the night in some godforsaken flea pit of a hotel, only to arrive here. Some 50 miles away from home, expecting to get paid, and what do I get? A sad mood. <laughs> well, what sort of mood do you think that puts me in? I, I thought I made it plain to you that my manager will return from town and then you will get your money. Hey, madam, I came here to see you, not your manager. What the hell, excuse my language, do I want with your manager? My dear sir, I will not have such language in my house, nor will I tolerate that tone of voice. I refuse to listen to any more of this. Oh, I don't believe it. Seven months ago today, my husband died and I am in a sad mood. Well, what do you expect me to do about that? I have a mortgage payment to make. So your husband's died, your manager's gone to town, you're in a sad mood, whatever. What am I supposed to do? Run around and throw my head into a brick wall? Oh, Fly away from my creditors in a balloon. Go to see Grushchev. He chooses not to be in. Go to see Yerushevich. He hides. Oh, go to see Karizin. Get into a fight. Damn near throw him out of his own window. Go to see Maustov, and he is ill. And now this one, this one, is in a sad mood. <laughs> not one of them has paid me the bunch of parasites. It is all because I am a soft touch. Yes, I'm a fool for a hard luck story. Too kind for my own good. Well, now it's time to get tough. 
No one's going to treat me like this anymore. I'm not leaving here until I get my money. Oh, oh I'm so mad. I'm, I'm mad enough to get nasty. Hey, you servant! What do you want? Bring some water. Better still, a beer. <laughs> Where is the logic in it? Here stands a man desperate for money. He, he needs money. He has a knife at his throat, which he won't pay up because, oh dear me, no. She's in no condition to talk about money. Oh, talk about women's logic. <laughs> that. That is why I never like talking to women and why I dislike doing it now. I would rather sit on a barrel full of gunpowder than talk to a woman. <laughs> oh, I'm getting as cold as ice. This affair has made me so angry. I only have to look at one of those romantic creatures and I, I get so mad I start to break out into a cold sweat. Oh, it makes me want to scream for help. Imagine he's sick and seeing nobody. Get out! Imagine <laughs> he's sick and seeing nobody. Well, she doesn't have to see me. I'll stay right here until I get my money. Huh. If you are in a week, I'll stay here a week. If you're in a year, I'll stay here a year. As heaven is my witness, madam, I want my money. Your black dress and your dimples don't impress me. <laughs> I've seen dimples before. <laughs> <coughs> hey, Simeon! Simeon! Simeon, untie the horses. We're not going anywhere. We're staying right here. Yeah. And tell them in the stables to give my horses some oats. <laughs> what? No, I'm staying right here. Hmm. Simeon, Simeon, the, the left horse, it's got the bridle twisted again. Stop and I'll show you how to... Wet, Simeon, wet! Oh, never mind. Oh, it's awful. Oh, hottest day of the year, unbearable heat. No one's paying me my money. Didn't sleep at all last night. And now, now I have to put up with some widow and her moods. Oh! Got a headache now. I need a drink. That's what I need. I ought to have a drink. Servant! What now? Shot of vodka! <laughs> Oh. Fine figure. I'm a mess and there's no use denying it. Dusty, dirty boots. Unwashed, my hair needs combing. Straw in my pocket. Surprised the lady didn't take me for some sort of highwayman. It was a little impolite to come into a reception room dressed like this, I suppose. Oh, damn it, I'm not here as a guest. I'm here as a bill collector. Nobody said I had to dress right. Take too many liberties, sir. What? Uh, nothing. I, I, I would just... Who do you about... think you're talking to? Just shut up! <laughs> oh, nice mess, this. This fellow's never going to leave. I am so mad. I'm so angry. I'm, I'm, I'm angry enough to blow up the world. <laughs> Do I even feel ill now? Hey! Oi! You! Hey! My dear sir, I have lived so long in retirement and in my solitude I have become unaccustomed to the human voice and I cannot stand the sound of shouting. I must earnestly beg you to respect my peace. Pay me my money and I'll leave. I have told you already plainly, in no uncertain terms, that I haven't the money here at the moment. You'll have to wait until the day after tomorrow. And I have told you in no uncertain terms that I cannot wait until the day after tomorrow. I need my money today. If you don't pay me my money today, I might as well hang myself the day after tomorrow. But what can I do if I haven't the money? So you won't pay me, is that what you're saying? I can't. Right, well then I will sit right here until you do pay me. You have to pay me the day after tomorrow, fine. I'll be sat right here. Listen. 
Do you not think I have a mortgage payment to tomorrow, or do you think I am joking? I asked you not to shout. This is not a stable. I'm not talking about stables. I am asking you, don't you believe I have a mortgage payment due tomorrow? You have no idea how to behave in a lady's presence. Oh, yes, I do know how to behave in a lady's presence. You do not. You are ill-mannered and vulgar. No gentleman would speak like this in front of a lady. Oh, well, pardon me. How should one speak in front of a lady? Huh? <coughs> in French, perhaps? Oh, madame, je vous prie. Oh, I'm so sorry I am for disturbing you. <laughs> How charmed I am for knowing that you are refusing to pay me my money. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry I have upset you. Oh, look, 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 look. Oh, what lovely weather we are having today. Huh? Oh, and my, do not look exquisite in black. Oh. Oh, that's not at all funny. I think you're very stupid. Stupid and not funny. I don't know how to behave in front of a lady. Woman, I will tell you I have seen more ladies than you have seen sparrows. <laughs> I have fought three jewels over ladies. Walked out on twelve ladies, nine have walked out on me. <laughs> oh, I used to be an idiot. Yes, I used to go all soft over them. I used honeyed language. I used to bow and scrape. Oh, I suffered. I loved, suffered, sighed into the moonlight, froze up, melted into puddles. I loved passionately, I loved madness, loved in every key. Chattered like a magpie on emancipation. I spent half my fortune on the tender passion until now, the devil knows, I've had enough of it. Dark eyes, red lips, dimples in cheeks, moonlight whispers, sighs of passion. Oh, I wouldn't give you tuppence for it anymore. Present company accepted, but all women are <laughs> hateful, pretentious, gossipy liars to the marrow of their bones, vain, petty, merciless, and with a maddening sense of logic. Oh, oh and in this respect. Excuse me for being frank, but a pigeon has ten times the brains of any philosopher in skirts. <laughs> when one looks upon one of these oh, romantic creatures, one sees a, an ethereal goddess, a, an angel walking amongst us, so wonderful that a mere breath could dissolve you into a sea of a thousand delights and passions. But look into her soul, pure crocodile. <laughs> but the worst of it is, is that this crocodile thinks it is a masterpiece of creation and has all the monopoly on the tender passions of love. Well, the devil hang me upside down if there is anything to love about a woman. When she is in love, all she can do is sigh and shed a tear. Now, a man, a man in love, he suffers and sacrifices. But a woman's lover shows up how? She swishes her skirts and gets a firm grip of it by the nose. You. You have the misfortune of being a woman, so you know what a woman's nature is like. Tell me, tell me, have you ever seen, in all honesty, a woman who is faithful and true? Hmm? No, never. The only faithful and true women are those who are old or ugly. <laughs> Easier to find a cap with horns than a faithful woman. Excuse me, would you mind telling me just who do you think is faithful and true? Men? Well, of course, men. Men. Oh, if men are true and faithful in love, well, that is something new. Spread the good news. How dare you make such a statement? Men true and faithful in love, let me tell you a thing or two. Of all the men I've ever known, my dear departed husband was the best. And I loved him passionately with all my soul as only a young, sensitive woman could love. I gave him my youth, my happiness, my money, my life. I lived and breathed him, I worshipped him, and what happened? His best of men betrayed me in every possible way. He cheated on me every chance he got. After his death, I found his desk filled with love letters. Even while he was alive, he would leave me alone for weeks on end. He flirted with other women in front of me, deceived me, laughed at me when I objected, wasted my money, made fun of my feelings, and in spite of everything, I loved him and I was true to him. And more than that, 
He is dead and I am still true to him. I will be faithful to his memory. I have buried myself within these four walls and I shall mourn him forever. I shall wear black until the day I die. <coughs> oh, dear, 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 dear. <laughs> Black, don't make me laugh. What sort of an idiot do you think I am? What sort of fool do you take me for? Huh? Oh, I know why you wear this Mardi Gras outfit and why you have buried yourself within these four walls. Oh, yes, because it's all so romantic, so mysterious, isn't it? You are waiting. You are waiting for a knight to come riding by the castle. Or some sentimental young schoolboy with a bad complexion. <laughs> he will look up at the window and think to himself, Ah, oh, there dwells the mysterious Tamara, who for the love of her husband has buried herself within these four walls. Mm -hmm. Yes, I know all about your little games. Oh, dare you suggest anything of the kind? You have buried yourself alive, but you have not forgotten how to powder your nose. <gasps> <laughs> dare you? How dare you speak to me like this? Oh, don't yell at me. I'm not your manager, but I am a man, not a woman. I'm used to calling a spade a spade. I am not yelling! It is you that are yelling! <laughs> Please just go and leave me alone. Pay me my money and I will leave. I won't pay you any money. Oh, yes, you will. I don't care what you do. You won't get a single penny from me now. Please go away. Madam, as I have had neither the pleasure of being your fiancé or your husband, so stop making scenes for my benefit. I don't like that. <coughs> you dare sit down. I already have. <laughs> Will you please leave? Pay me my money. I don't care to speak with impotent men. I want nothing more to do with you. Leave! Still here, you haven't left. No. <laughs> no? No. Very well. Luca, will you please show this gentleman out? <laughs> Please, sir, would you, would you leave the ladies' house? Who the devil do you think you're talking to? I will chop you to pieces! Oh, oh, I know! Oh, I can't breathe! Oh, I'm dying! I can't breathe! Come on, get out of here, piggy! There's nobody else left in the house! I'm ill, water! Leave! Get out! Kindly be a little more polite. Oh, you are vulgar! You're a vulgar! Bear. What did you call me? I said you're a bear. Bear. How <laughs> <laughs> dare you speak to me like that? <coughs> I allow no one to speak to me. What of it? I'm insulting you. What do you think I should? Oh, and you think that because you are some romantic heroine that you can insult me with impunity? Is that right? No, clearly not. This is the matter for the field of honour. I challenge you. Oh, merciful heavens, water! <laughs> you have big fists and a bull's neck that I should be afraid of you, you bear! Oh, I allow no one to insult me like that. Now give your woman one of the weaker sex. Bear. Bear. It is high time bear. that we got rid of this preconception that it is only the man bear. who is forced to give bear. satisfaction. Bear. If there is to be bear. equity, then there will be equity in all things! I challenge you to a duel! Oh, you wish to fight a duel? Good. <laughs> right this minute? Right this minute. My husband had a set of pistols wait here and I'll fetch them. <laughs> what a pleasure it'll be to put a bullet through your thick head. The devil take you. <laughs> well, I will shoot her like a chicken. Huh. I am no fledgling, no sentimental young pup. No okay, care, she is one of the weaker sex. No, 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 please, sir, don't do this. No, 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 take pity on me. I'm an old man. <laughs> you frightened me dead already. I have a weak heart. Please don't shoot her. Just go. A duel, yes. That is equality, emancipation, equality of the sexes at last. <laughs> I'll shoot her as a matter of principle. <laughs> what can you say to a woman like that? Huh? Who the devil take you up with a bullet through your thick head? 
Oh. Oh. Then she got all flushed. She was angry, her eyes blazed with fire. I mean, she accepted my challenge without hesitation. Oh my God, I've never experienced this in my life before. Huh. Oh. That, that is a woman, yes, a real woman. Huh. I can understand her. <laughs> Nothing wishy-washy about her. Not one of your war, sentimental wallflowers, no. She's a flint and fire power. Ah. Seems a shame to have to shoot a woman like that. <laughs> please, sir, just go. Do you know I love her? <laughs> Isn't that strange? I actually like this woman. Well, so she has dimples, but I still like her. <laughs> I'm almost ready to forget. Tell her to forget all about the money and. No. <laughs> I'm not angry anymore. What an astonishing woman. <laughs> right, here are the pistols. But before we have our duel, will you please show me how to use the damn things? I've never eaten that. Merciful heaven, I will get help. Why is it happening to us? Right. Yes, uh, now, um, you, you see, there, there, there are several makes of weapon. Uh, there's the Mortimer. Mm, uh, that's a special dueling pistol with percussion action, but, but what you have here are revolvers. Ah. Ooh, Smith and Weston with ejectors. Mm. Central sights, triple action. Five pistols must have cost at least 90 rubles the pair. Now, this is the way you hold a revolver. Those eyes, what amazing eyes she has. <laughs> A real spitfire. Like this? Yeah, yes, that's right. Now you pull the hammer back like this. Take aim, put your head back a little. Now stretch your arm out like so. Now all you do is you put your finger on the trigger like that and that's all there is to it. Now, the main thing is to remember to keep your cool. Take slow, careful aim. <laughs> don't, don't rush, don't hurry your aim. And whatever you do, above all, don't let your hand shake. <laughs> right, well, this isn't well to shoot inside. Let's go into the garden. <laughs> yes, right. Um, so we should go into the garden, but I, I have to warn you, uh, I shall shoot into the air. Why? Why? Well, uh, because, uh, because, because that's none of your business. You're scared. Yes. Ah, oh, you're scared. Oh, no, no, my dear sir, no flinching. You won't get out of this so easily. Please follow me. Wait, rest until I've made a hole in the head I hate so much. You a coward? Yes. <coughs> yes, that, that, that's right. I, I, I'm a coward. You are lying. Why would you fight? Because. Because. Because I like you. <laughs> <laughs> you like me. He dares to tell me he likes me. You may leave, Mr. Smirnoff. Listen, are you still bad? I mean, I was as bad as the devil, but, but look, let me please uh, explain. Um, the, the thing is, how can I put this? Um, the, the thing is, oh damn it, is it my fault if I like you? I like you. I'm almost in love with you. Get away from me, I hate you. Oh my God, what a woman. <laughs> I've never met one before you before like you in my life. I, I, I am lost, ruined, caught like a mouse in a trap. Get away from me or I'll shoot. Well, go ahead and shoot. <laughs> you have no idea what it would be like to die from the sight of those beautiful eyes, to die 
from the revolver in this tiny velvet hand. <laughs> Consider and decide, for if I leave now, we shall never see each other again. Consider, speak. I am a noble. I have a lot of land. I'm a respectable man from a respectable family. I have an income of at least 10,000 a year. I, I can put a bullet through a coin in the air at 20 paces. I have the finest horses you will ever see. Will you marry me? <laughs> <laughs> marry you? I intend to shoot you on the field of honour. My mind is unclear. I can't understand. I, I've fallen in love like a schoolboy. Uh, I love you. I love you as I've never loved anyone before. <laughs> Twelve women I've walked out on, and nine have walked out on me, but <laughs> none of them have I loved as I love you now. L look at me. Look at me. I, I, I am lost. I, I, I kneel at your feet like a fool and beg for your hand. For five years now I haven't been in love, and I swore I never would, but all of a sudden I am caught. I am head over heels and I'm asking you to marry me. I beg for your hand. Yes or no. Will you? No. No, fine. Wait, I didn't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> well? <laughs> Nothing, you may go. <laughs> but no, I mean, wait, 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 wait. No, I mean, go. I hate you. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> but wait, no, 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 myself. I've fallen in love like a schoolboy. I get down on bended knee. I've even come out in goosebumps. I love you. It is all I needed was to fall in love with you. And tomorrow I have my mortgage to pay <laughs> and then the hay harvest to cut and then and then you appear. <sighs> I will never forgive myself for this. Oh, go away. Take your hands off me. I hate you. Oh my God. <laughs> Luca? Go and tell them in the stables that Toby doesn't get extra oats anymore. <laughs> <laughs>